For this example, we'd like to compute the surface area of the surface given by this function that lies below this plane. And so we're not given the domain D for this example, but we're going to have to find it. So let's start by sketching this graph. We know that, um, by the way, this is of course Z equals uh, X squared plus Y squared. So we know that the graph of this function is a paraboloid. It opens upward. Its vertex is at the origin in, three, in the three-dimensional plane, or three-dimensional space. And it's got no stretch factor. And so the graph, I'll do the whole thing in green. The graph just looks like a standard paraboloid. All right. And again, the domain of this function, so if the function is mapping the points up to this paraboloid, the domain of this function is the entire plane. But we've got this extra piece of information here. We only want to find the surface area of the portion of this surface that lies below the plane z equals 9, and so I'll make that plane be this one that cuts right here. If this is z equals 9, then this portion now would, of the green paraboloid that sits below the red, the red plane here, that's the portion that we want to find the surface area of. And notice that this intersection right here, this is a circle, and this is going to give us the domain of our function because all of the surface lies within this disk, if we were to push this down to the plane below. And so our domain is just a projection of this disk down onto the xy plane. Okay? And so to figure out what this disk is down here, this is going to be the function f of, uh, f of xy equals x squared plus y squared set equal to the z value, equal to 9. And of course, this is a disk, so that's the boundary, so that's the circle. But that means that our domain is just the disk um, that's the disk of radius 3, the interior of the disk of radius 3. Okay, so that's our domain. Here's our function. And if we want to find the surface area, we remember that ds is equal to 1 plus the derivative with respect to x squared plus the derivative with respect to y squared. So let's compute those derivatives. And then, um, hopefully at this point, you're already thinking, hey, Justin, man, that looks a lot like, both of these things look a lot like they should be polar coordinates. But we don't have our, our ds, this is times da, of course. We don't have our ds in terms of polar coordinates yet, so we need to make sure that we compute this first and then switch to polar coordinates if we still think that that's the best option. Because remember, we're not integrating this function, we're integrating the surface area element here. So let's compute. So the x partial derivative is just 2x. This is a nice, simple-looking function. Similarly, the y derivative is just 2y. And when we square these and plug them into our area element, we end up with 1 plus 4x squared plus 4y squared, all under the square root, times da. And then, um, so this is what we need to integrate. But we've already talked about a little bit here. We're already thinking polar coordinates might be the way to go. And so when we look at this, this looks like 4r squared. 4 times x squared plus y squared, parentheses. So this is 4r squared. And so our polar integral, we're going to do this integral in polar coordinates. It's going to become, remember, one of the key things that you're never allowed to forget in polar coordinates is what happens to the area element, dA. This is going to become r dr d theta in our polar coordinates. Similarly, down here, our radius is going to work out from 0 to 3. And then the angle theta is going to go all the way around. So theta will go from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, and our polar integral then becomes the surface area is equal to integral from 0 to 2 pi, integral from 0 to 3 in the r direction, of our surface area element, which is 1 plus 4r squared in polar coordinates, times, outside of the square root, r dr d theta. This integral is separable. Um, the theta doesn't show up in the integrand at all, so this becomes integral 0 to 2 pi d theta times the integral from 0 to 3, r 1 plus 4r squared dr. This first integral is, of course, just 2 pi. 
And for the second integral, we need to make a u sub. So our u will equal 1 plus 4r squared. We automatically now compute du. We don't get to choose du. du becomes 8r dr, which is, of course, OK. We can throw an 8 here as long as we divide by 8 outside. And then the other thing we need to check is what happens to our bounds. So when r is equal to 3, u is equal to 3 squared, so 9 times 4, which is 36 plus 1, so that's 37. That's the upper bound now. And when r is equal to 0, u is just equal to 1. Okay, so our integral now becomes, we've got a 2 pi, which we computed, times 1 eighth. So that just cancels to become pi over 4. The integral is now equal to the integral from 1 to 37 of the square root of u du. And so this is no problem. This is pi over 4 times u to the 3 halves power times 2 thirds, where u goes from 1 to 37. All right, we get a little cancellation here. And we end up with our surface area being pi over 6 times the difference, 37 to 3 s power is 37 times square root 37 minus 1. Okay, and we're going to leave it just like this for this problem. But that's pi over 6 times 37 root 37 minus 1. Or you could leave this as 37 to the 3 house power. That's the surface area of the paraboloid below this plane.